Hello and welcome to today's program. My name is Joanna Mambia. A fever is a temporary increase in your body temperature, often due to an illness. It is a sign that something out of the ordinary is going on in your body. Fever plays a huge role in fighting off a number of infections. Your first reaction to discomfort is probably to put on more clothes or blankets so you will feel warm. The problem with doing this is that bundling up in even more layers will also increase your body temperature further. By the end of this lesson, you will have learned a couple of preventive measures and how to cope with fever. Stay tuned. Try to lower the temperature using cold water. Yeah, dump it and wipe the wipe myself so that the temperatures come down. This is how they will have done it. Although it is it feels uncomfortable, yeah, especially with fever, the patient will be feeling cold and then you are applying something cold, for example like a damp cloth. So you will have ended up like this one, or even sometimes a warm bath for the whole body. Limiting exposure to infectious agent agents is one of the best ways to prevent a fever. But what are fevers exactly? Why do we get them? Why do parents and doctors care so much about them? And once you have one, how do you get rid of it? We went to find out what people know about fever, and this is what we found out. Uh, I've had it once. Uh, the remedy that, that I used was some cold water with a soft cloth. I put in the head, a cloth in the head, and then the fever cooled down. But now, nowadays I can see people, there are some medicines that people usually buy, especially for the children, so that when they are given, the fever comes down. Yes. Uh, I'm passing this uh, suffering of fever, and uh, it was very hard to me. I sweat and I take uh, some some sometimes to to be to come out from this but I take some tablets like uh, maramoja and I take three to that minutes and uh, I I come to be well. Well if Going by that, if that's fever, then I've had uh, fevers. Uh, when I have a fever, the home remedy is that uh, I cool myself. Let's say, put, take a towel, you try to lower the temperature using cold water. Yeah, dump it and wipe, the, wipe myself so that the temperatures come down. Mm. So, has it worked for you? It works. Uh, or if I, otherwise, I go for drugs. Uh -huh. Don't go back under the covers just yet. Stay put to learn more facts on fever. Our nutritionist, Sister Hesperance Diodate, will now teach us more natural dietary remedies we can embrace to manage fevers. Now, let us talk a little bit about the non infectious. For example, the vasculitis or deep veins thrombosis and sometimes even the side effects of some medication and cancer, all those could cause fever. And so fever by itself does not tell somebody to quickly react on lowering, especially because it is a bell that is ringing to tell, to warn somebody that something definitely is not right. So treatment to reduce heat generally is not required. Probably what will have happened is to pay more attention to exactly what will have been the cause of that fever. And sometimes treatment of associated pain, if that comes with a certain pain and inflammation, may be useful and help that person to rest. Now there are signs and symptoms that are accompanied by this um, fever, for example, sickness behavior, lethargy, depression, anorexia, 
sleepiness, drowsiness, inability to concentrate. And you see, so when that happens, this person is feeling unwell traditionally. When you see somebody sickly, we have a tendency of just checking the temperature using the back of our hands like this, but that is not uh, normally what medically, it is a traditional way. It is a traditional way, this is what we'll have done to our children, to our loved ones, to our family, when we want to see if the temperature, if this person is okay or not. But if you truly want to diagnose uh, the, 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 temp, the fever, it will be using a thermometer. You see, a thermometer, there are several different types of thermometers. And um, formerly we used to have those ones which will shake like this. And then when the temperature has gone down, then they will put it sometimes to check the rectal temperature. The rectal temperature normally is supposed to be 34.4 to 37.8 degrees Celsius. That is the normal one. So when the thermometer is in, inserted in the anus, it means if it will read 37.5 to above, then yes, the fever will be detected through the rectal temperature. But also, oral, orally, if the thermometer is put and in the mouth, under the tongue, where the normal temperature there is supposed to be 33.2 to 38.2, if it goes above, then there will be a problem. The fever will also be detected. But there's another way, under the arm. You see, a thermometer like this is inserted under the arm, and then uh, the hand is put like this. Then when it is reading, um, above 37.2, because the normal will be 35.5 to 37, then again they will detect um, um, the presence of fever to that patient. But again, sometimes a thermometer, a special thermometer, could be put in the ear, the tympanic. Now when it is there, it will also be detect the temperature. So that is how the, they will have detected through the thermometer they will have detected, they will have diagnosed if this person has fever. There are different types of fever. There is continuous fever. When a patient has UTI, typhoid, fever, meningitis, and pneumonia, the fever will be continuous, okay? The fever will be continuous. And you see, that is one way when you, you are talking to the doctor the way he will ask questions, he will also want to see at least, at least to be able to, to tell what kind of fever that is to know what medication or what uh, examination he should, uh, uh, he should direct you to. Then there is also intermittent fever, like in the case of malaria. Remittent fever, like for example in brucellosis, there is a neutropenic fever, but this one is in the absence of the normal immune system. That is when you can have that type of fever. There's another condition where the temperature is high, but there is no fever. The temperature is high, and this could occur because of some heat stroke or malignant hyperthermia stimulus such as cocaine or serotonin. This also one can uh, detect uh, this uh, incre increment of temperature and that is referring, is being referred as the hyperexia. Hyperexia is when there is uh, increment of temperature but not necessarily fever. Now what is the usefulness of fever? Number one, it is aiding in host defense. It is a bell. It is increasing the mobility of these white blood cells. It is enhancing them to be aggressive enough to go to work. Okay, so fever is a bell that there is a problem. But also, it is decreasing the toxic effect of what is happening in the body. It is increasing proliferation of T cells. There we have cells, different cells in the body, which are, are working to defend the body. So 
their function, they will be able to act better. They'll be able to work better in the presence of fever. So fever should not necessarily be treated. Most people recover without specific medical attention. And you know, the damage to the brain is not occurring until when the temperature has gone too high. For example, 42 degrees Celsius, all right? And so if that is the case, one will have just increased the fluid intake as you are waiting, as you are seeing the doctor, as you are, 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 are taking, uh, you're you are, you are, you are doing your examination, the fluid intake is necessary to be increased. But also, sometimes the aggressive, the aggressive cooling may be necessary if the temperature is still going very high. Now, fever is not an illness. Again, I want to emphasize on this one that fever is not an illness. It is a physiological mechanism that has a beneficial effect in fighting infection. Uh -huh. Fever by itself is retarding the growth and production of bacteria and viruses. And so it is a good thing. All right. So most fever are of short duration, but also fever helps the body to recover quickly. Now, traditionally, there is a way we will have done, traditionally, there is a way we will have done to manage fever. And I just want to demonstrate, so I will invite my patient, at least we demonstrate a little bit. Traditionally, people will have used a warm bath or even sometimes cold damp cloth. Now like this one. And then they will have sponged on the forehead like this one. This is how they will have done it. Although it, is, it feels uncomfortable, yeah, especially with fever, the patient will be feeling cold, and then you are applying something cold, for example, like a damp cloth. So you will have ended up like this one, or even sometimes a warm bath for the whole body. But now you can imagine for the reasons that we have stated, which causes fever. You can see that this will not, not be very reliable, and this one will not have addressed the cause of that fever. Now, children younger than three months require medical attention as might people with serious medical problem. And so when this happens, you need to learn, you need to find out, you need to seek medical attention at least to know the cause of that fever. Because as we have stated before, it comes because of many reasons. Okay? And again, what happens is that since medication lowers fever, it means it will not be a very good idea to lower that fever before you know exactly what is happening. If the cause has not been detected, sometimes lowering that fever will also uh, spoil the diagnosis, and that will, be, will not be a very good thing. So still, we need to seek medical attention. And then the medication, the medication by itself that lowers fever are called antipyretics. It is advised to seek medical attention again, I'm emphasizing on that one, to learn the cause of the fever. Now, there are natural remedies. Once you have already been diagnosed and you are on medication for the cause of that fever, there will be um, some natural remedies which will enable you to lower the fever at the same time to enhance your immune system to work better. The condition that will be conducive for your immune system to be able to perform its work very well without interfering with the guards, with the white blood cells, with the phagocytosis, which is the process of uh, engulfing, uh, removing, reducing, 
destroying the bacteria or virus in the body. So these natural remedies will take us into some demonstration and I just want you to see a little bit on how they work. But remember, this, you only apply these ones when you have already been diagnosed and when you are on medication for the cause and you just want to control fever by itself. Let's see. Remember, fever is not a sickness, it is a symptom. And so after you have addressed the fever, it has been diagnosed, you are on a certain treatment, the cause has already been um, determined, then you just need to control the fever. There are some natural remedies that will be very helpful without interfering with the work of the immune system. We will need several ingredients. And today, we will have purple leaves. These are normal purple leaves that we know, and we are going to work on these ones in two ways. But also, drinking water. This drinking water, because the body needs to be hydrated, if squeezed it with a little lemon like this, or any of the citrus, lime, or orange, then it is also very he helpful. It is not interfering, but it is helping the immune system. But now with the fresh propolis, this is what you will have done with a very young child, a small child who has fever, and this child is on medication, you just want to control it. This is what you will do with this purple leaf. You will remove the stalk and chop it. And then after chopping it, you need to have a mortar. A mortar, a normal spice mortar, the one we normally use when we crush garlic and such, will have worked very well. And then, of course, you will have to work it out. You will have to pound it. It has very little water, but it is necessary. You might need to do it a little bit longer, but it works very fast when it has already been done. Now, for example, like this one is already done. I just want to remove um, the pounding mortar. And I'll use this spoon and this mixture in the palm of my hand, and this is what I will do. I will squeeze it nicely and try to get a very little liquid without adding it with any water, with anything. I just want to remove this, and this one works very well even to a small child to younger ones, it works very fast, less than two minutes. And now after you have squeezed it, you'll get very little liquid. But this one is very pure. Now in this pure one, and this is what again you will do. I'll show you in a minute as I'm rinsing my hand. With the pure fresh purple leaf juice that you will have gotten, very green, very concentrated, but very little as well. You will mix it with honey. Only one teaspoon is enough, and this is natural honey, and you will mix it very well. It is normally bitter, but the honey is enhancing the absorption. It is taking it so quickly. And you know, you talk of remedies. I do not think there is any remedy that works much faster in controlling fever like this one. But remember, it is the fever that is under medication. The cause is under medication. Now, like this one, if it is a small child or a young child below 10, this is what we'll have done with an adult. 
you want to take it really fast, this is what we'll have done. You take it really quickly, like this one. Mm. Done. Look at your watch as it is moving. Ta, ta, ta. Less than six seconds. You are done. The fever is gone. But you know what? When the cause has already been addressed. That is one way. The second way, I will take you really faster. This is what you will have done. You will take the same purple leaves. And what you want to do, you want to change the chemistry of your blood without interfering. Actually, you are enabling the white blood cells to work really faster. And so this is what you'll have done. You will take this one, put it in a blender, and add some water. You will not add anything, but you want to take, you also want to hydrate the body. You will add some water. You need like a glass or so. Now, when you have already put it in the blender, you need to blend it really fast. Here you'll, have, you'll be doing two things at a time. You'll be hydrating the body and doing the same thing because purple leaves is highly alkaline. So what you are trying to do, you are trying to change the chemistry of your blood because whenever you have fever, you will see that your blood is also acidic because the presence of that fever, the presence of the cause, the presence of everything, so all those will be interfering. And so you will need to hydrate the body, but also you will need to change the chemistry of your blood without necessarily interfering with your immune system. So when this happens, after you have done this, again, you can or you cannot. If you decide to add it with honey, the absorption will really be faster. And especially because it is bitter, it will make it at least manageable. And when you do like this, with two big purple leaves, and you drink it, you see, it will enable, when you have already changed the chemistry, it will turn the fever down even quicker, but not much quicker than the other one. And so this one, again, you will drink it. By doing this, you will have been hydrating your body, but changing the chemistry of the blood, also uh, helping the fever to go down, but also cutting the action of the virus or of the bacteria and building your immune system. Remember, it has chlorophyll, it has plenty of vitamins and minerals, it has antioxidants, it has phytochemicals, and it is anti-inflammatory. So by doing this, you are helping your body to go back to its old normal homeostasis. So you are doing this, you are doing better, and it is very good for you. This is all about uh, fever and um, natural remedies, and it is good for everybody, but only when you have already addressed the cause of that fever. Thank you very much. Think of it as your body's thermostat, like that thing on the wall of your house that you use to set the heat or the air conditioning. Your hypothalamus knows what temperature your body should be and will send messages to the body to keep it that way. But what's actually happening in your body when you feel the urge to wrap yourself in an excessive number of blankets? Dr. Fesaha Tegai, a public health specialist, is here to enlighten you on routine habits you should commence to manage and curb a fever. Hi, my name is Dr. Fasaz Agai. I'm a medical doctor and a public health specialist. You have learned a couple of lessons on fever, and I just want to give you more understanding on this subject. A high body temperature or fever is one of the most common medical signs 
a high body temperature is considered a medical emergency. In theory, fever can aid in host defense. Some pathogens with strict temperature preference could be hindered. The research has demonstrated that fever assists the healing process. Here are a few tips to help you manage fever. One, wash your hands before and after meals and after visiting the toilet since fevers are commonly caused by bacteria and viral infection. Two, avoid sharing cups, spoons and other eating utensils. Three, stay well hydrated during strenuous exercise. Take frequent breaks to re-energize and cool down after the workout. Four, for households with toddlers, remember to disinfect household items such as remote controls, phones, and door knobs regularly since young children tend to put anything in their mouths. Five, carry hand sanitizer or antibacterial wipes with you. They come in handy when you don't have access to soap and water. Infectious agents often cause body temperature to rise. Limiting exposure to infectious agent, agents is one of the best ways to prevent a fever. Most fevers will go away on their own within a day or two. But instead of just waiting around for relief, you can take steps to speed your recovery and increase your comfort. You should also be sure to drink plenty of liquids such as water or fruit juices. Liquids cool you down from the inside and help prevent dehydration. Some common wisdom dictates that a fever should be allowed to run its course without interference to help it eliminate the germ that's making you sick. Indeed, some studies show that intervening to reduce a fever may prolong the infection. I hope you have learned a few tips to manage your next experience of a fever. Tune in next time for another enlightening episode on health and flavor. My name is Joanna Mambia. Bye.